thank you for joining me this late this is uh, very very late and here it is already sunday uh, this is uh, sunday it is just a little bit uh, 18 over 12 midnight or morning and this is 16th of february 2018 thank you for joining me this evening this morning i would say and some evening in some place tablet thank you for joining me juma thank you for joining me martin's chat for joining me dobisi abasi happening okoye thank you for joining me this late and those of you who are awake this late offer samuel my own offer samuel thank you for joining me this late i am going to uh of course normally i usually say it my broadcast my live broadcast is going to be very brief but the issues and the uh, incidents that are happening always always uh, compel me to go uh beyond the estimated time but those of you who are still awake uh thanks you for joining me and uh, i'm sorry for coming this late but it requires that you know we so we don't uh, miss anything and and uh, so that the videos the videos and our gospel and our messages will be available for you to be sharing to people who are still thinking and contemplating whether or not to support nigeria disintegration so yesterday we are waiting for like 500 viewers and we we, we continue uh thank you this is 500 viewers so you are watching my live broadcast today which is 16th of february 2020 and what this is a continuation of where i stopped yesterday concerning why you must support nigeria disintegration continue awareness and then i talked about the soviet union yesterday and today i continue from the line of from that where i stopped yesterday about the soviet union and today i am visiting yugoslavia yugoslavia you people must have heard the or at least have some knowledge concerning yugoslavia now why is it important that i am visiting this history is that for you to know that Nigeria has come to the point which we have to take that decision that these countries that I am visiting now, the history now, took during those crucial times. And Nigeria today is facing the exact problem that these countries that I am visiting have faced in the past and which led to the disintegration of that country. But before I go further, let me let you know today, Ezi Babuja, thank you, I see you, thank you for joining me. Let me, know, let me let you know what has happened today. And it is almost the same thing that has happened in Yugoslavia. It is almost the same thing that has happened in Soviet Union that led to their disintegration at the end of the day. It is what is happening in Nigeria today. There is no difference. Nigeria is even worse. What is happening in Nigeria today is worse than what happened in Soviet Union and Yugoslavia that led to the disintegration of those countries. But before I go further, I want to let you know one thing. Today, Nigeria of today, the, this uh, civil defense, what you must have read the news about civil defense, the NSDC, NSCDC, the civil defense in Nigeria, they came, this is, 419 this is pure 419 pure yahoo yahoo government pure yahoo yahoo security agency every security agency in nigeria they are all scammers they are all criminals every security agency from military police and this civil defense and any other one they are all criminals i want nigeria to know this today they came to announce to Nigerians, especially their, uh, their personnel, whom they have cut their salary. They cut the personnel of civil defense service 
uh, salary. But listening to what they have to tell those personnel, those aggrieved personnel that they have cut their salary, listening, listening very attentively, what they have to tell their own personnel whom they have caught and scammed their salaries. They said this, the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps said that we are deduction in the January salaries of some of its personnel as a result of integrated payroll and personal information system. Listen to this. The NSCDC said on Sunday, which is today, that the deduction were to recover the funds overpaid to some personnel in December 2019 due to system error. Noting that the deduction were not from COPS, from the COPS, but from the Office of Accountant General of Federation. Now, and when they want to commit this kind of crime, they will send somebody by the name A.K. Emmanuel, who is their spokesperson. So what I want to tell you is this. They are deducting the salary of their own personnel. And the reason that is now that, that they are not giving to this personnel, why they deducted their salary for January, is because some of their personnel have been overpaid. So, Nigerians, I am asking you people, if a security agency, which is civil defense, overpaid some of their personnel in December, now they are deducting other personnel that were not overpaid to compensate the overpayment of other personnel. Does that make any sense? Does that make any sense? It doesn't make any sense. And of course, nobody is paying attention. This is complete 419. They paid, according to them, they overpaid some, some of their personnel in December. And in January, they are coming to deduct those officers that were not overpaid to compensate the overpayment of another officer. Does that make any sense? And they, they are coming to give this kind of explanation because the personnel are complaining. This is complete 419. Because if you overpaid somebody, if, if this civil defense overpaid their personnel, they should go and deduct the salary of that personnel that they have overpaid, not another personnel that knows nothing about the money. But it is a crime. They are committing crime here. They are, over, they are deducting salary of their personnel for embezzlement. And when they begin to complain, they say they overpaid some personnel. So if you overpaid some personnel, why are you deducting the personnel or other personnel that, did not over, that you did not overpay? It's a simple thing. If you know that you overpaid some personnel, the personnel or you overpaid, the history of their account is there. The name of the personnel you overpaid is there. Why must you now deduct the other personnel that you did not overpay? to compensate the overpayment of December. This is pure crime. And this has been going on in, this is what these Fulanis who are controlling this, these security agencies are doing every day. And now they are explaining to personnel of the civil defense that the, the, it is not their fault. It is not their, it, the, the, that it is not them that are deducting their salary. You see, they have shifted the blame to the Accountant General of the Federation. Instead of, instead of the, the civil defense, uh, the, the, the leadership or whoever the person is of the civil defense to now go and sort out who have been, who the account has been deducted that did not over, that were not overpaid in December with the Attorney General or whatever Accountant General of the Federation, they are giving public statement which means it is not their fault. They are exonerated themselves that these salaries of the pers personnel are being deducted because some of their personnel were overpaid in December. This is a crime. 
This is a crime and this is scam and this is Yahoo Yahoo in this government. So I am calling Nigerians to take note of this, what this uh, civil defense have done. They must pay those people that they are deducting their salary who, de who were not overpaid in December last year. They must return their money and pay them their salary, whether it was their first or not. These people have worked. You cannot continue to kill them. The salary you are paying them is not enough and you are deducting it and complaining and claiming that you have overpaid some officers. That is one. Before I continue, I have not started yet. The second thing is that all of you remembered when I warned that the uh, the incident that will be happening between now and the end of January will compel these governors in Biafra land to take a very proactive measures. And it will compel everybody to start running around. Today, you have heard what the governor of Delta State said. I also warned that Edo State and Delta State, are begin with, there is a threat. And... The threat that is coming from Fulanese, everybody will be feeling it. I also want most of you who are following my video must have wondered, must have watched that video where I was giving this warning. And today, the governor of Delta State can confirm that military aided the killing, the attack uh, by by the uh, Fulani headsmen. The governor of Delta State, Okowa, have come to confess that the people who attacked their community, they said were headed by or sheltered by Fulanis. Fulani, Fulani, the military men, the, the Fulani that, that uh, attacked Delta State, the, that military assist, assisted them. Military personnel assisted the Fulanis to come and kill. I told you people that they are sending these Boko Haram members of Nigeria military to the southern and southern part of Nigeria you people did not listen. Now it is happening. Today, for the first time, the governor is saying that military personnel assisted the killers, the attackers in Delta State. It is in public domain. This, what Oko, Okowa have said today is in public domain. And it was not, it is not different from what I have been shouting that it is going to be happening. And it is happening as I said it. Remember, I said before the end of February, and today is 16, and now a governor is accusing the military that military came to participate in the attack carried out by Fulani. It is on record. I said it. I said it. Now, before, uh, if you want me, I can read what the Okowa, what Okowa, the governor of Delta State, have to say. The Okowa said this. I have directed the commissioner of police and the brigadier, uh, the brigade commander, 63 Brigade Nigeria Army, to rise to occasion and bring the culprit to justice. You know, the only thing that, the only thing that concern, that I'm, my concern in this Delta State attack is the statement by the governor. The statement by the governor is giving me a serious concern. The statement by the governor is giving me a serious concern. Look at what the governor said. He said, as a state, our people have been very receptive to his men and other visitors, but our hospitality and welcoming disposition should not be taken uh, as an act of cowardic. It is already an act of cowardic. If you cannot ask your people to rise up today and protect themselves, it is already an act of cowardic. If you, the governor of Delta State, Okowa, will come publicly to say that military participated in the attack, shared Boko Haram, and you are saying that you, it, is not, and it is not cowardic. It is already cowardic because this is not the first time your communities are being attacked by Fulani Hesmen. And you, every time they attack you, 
you will come to give this kind of statement. You think that the Fulanis are listening to your statement? You think that the Fulanis are, are reading your English? You think that the Fulanis are interested in what you are saying? They are not interested. It is time you begin to arm your people. And this is why we are talking about indigenous police. Now it is happening, the military are participating in attacking people in Biafra land. It is, we are talking about indigenous security. This is where indigenous security comes in. And if you cannot get indigenous security, it is time you begin to arm your citizens to defend themselves. It is called self-defense. Whoever comes, whether the military or the headsmen, these people have the right to defend themselves. They are protected under international law. It is called self-defense. So, and they cont you continue again. This is what is breaking my heart. The statement I am reading from Delta State Governor. He said, the state government will continue to encourage peaceful and harmonious relationship between Deltans and their visitors, but will not watch outsider attack and kill our people any longer. You have been watching the outsiders to attack and kill your people how many times? You yourself, the governor said this is not the first time, that the, it has become a yearly routine. So when are you going to now begin to act as the chief security officer of Delta State? And this, only, this is not only to Delta. It, is, it goes to all the states in Biafra land. And every time they attack you, you will come to give this kind of statement. The people you are giving the statement does not understand. They don't read newspapers. They don't read punch newspaper. They don't read any newspaper. They don't listen to channel TV. They don't listen to NTA. They're only listening to that radio that they have. That small radio you see them carrying up and down is the only thing they are listening to. So if you are giving statement, give the statement in Fulani language and let the statement be air. In that station, in that radio station where which they are listening to, they have that radio, that is the only way they can listen to you and you cannot do that because you don't even know where the radio station is located. But they are listening to that radio, they are listening to that radio station. Until you find out where the radio station is located, who is sponsoring it, who owns it, and you can go and send your statement to that radio channel. Let them, let them air it so that these people can listen to you. Otherwise, all these things, you, every time they kill your people, you come to write this kind of thing. It's nonsense. The time has passed. What we are now is in the final stage. It is not time to start to come and write and begin to warn them. They are not listening to you. They are not listening to you. And this is what I want. And I, am, I continue to warn, the Southeast now is coming. The Southeast governor, if you people continue to shout this community policing, you will be, you will be, you, all of you will be the victim. All of you will be the victim. The governors of Biafra land. The community policing can never be accepted. Biafrans must rise up. Every Igbo person must rise up. And I, I commend, I commend uh, uh, Ohanez and Igbo for coming, for the first time, for coming to stand on the right path and rejecting the, 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 the community policy. Because it is dead on arrival. You cannot, the police that have always, that already failed, that are corrupt, that are criminals, you will go and start giving, just like we are talking about military now in Delta State. Military personnel participated in attacking community in Delta State. And you can imagine, military who are, of course, it is not surprising to me or to us, the Biafrans, because we know, and this is what we have warned, it is not like we did not say it. We said it and we are, we are still saying it. Now, let me now come back to, to my business of the day. I am so sorry this is very late, but it is worth listening. And if you cannot continue to listen, you will wait till tomorrow and you can listen when you wake up. Now, I want to, I want to read a little bit about uh, this, uh, the, the uh, Yugoslavia that you know. Yugoslavia, the breakup of Yugoslavia occurred as a result of a series of political upheavals and conflict during the early 90s. 
which exactly what is going on in Nigeria. Nigeria own is worse because we have terrorism now. We have Nigeria alone have five different terrorist organizations from the north. From the same region, five different terrorist organizations. No country will, no, I don't think any country in the world, all this uh, Islamist country, I don't think any country have five terrorist country, uh, five terrorist group in the, in, in the world. But Nigeria have five deadly terrorist group in, in Nigeria. Now, listening to, listen to what happened in Yugoslavia. The breakup of Yugoslavia occurred as a result of a series of political upheaval and conflict during the early 1990s. After a period of political and economic crisis, political and economic crisis, Nigeria have political crisis, Nigeria have economic crisis, Nigeria have also terror, terrorism, issue of terrorism, corruption, but in Yugoslavia, it was only a political and economic crisis. In the 80s, the constituent, the Republic of the Socialist Federal, uh, Federal, uh, Federal Republic of Yugoslavia split apart, but the unresolved issue caused by bitter inter-ethnic, listen, bitter inter-ethnic Yugoslavians war. The war primarily affected Bosnia and Herzegovina, neighboring part of Croatia, and some years later, Kosovo. Now, let us go into the business of why I have come to tell you about Yugoslavia today. So you have seen the reason why Yugoslavia splitted because of economic and political crisis. But today in Nigeria, we are having economic crisis. We are having political crisis. We are having, we, there is war in Nigeria. We have terror, terrorism. We are fighting corruption. We are fighting ethnic tension. There is it, there is everything you can think of, and it is not even close to what happened in Yugoslavia, which led to their disintegration. So after Yugoslavia disintegrated, after Yugoslavia disintegrated, six countries emerges from Yugoslavia as a result of the political and economic crisis coupled with the ethnic tension, just like in Nigeria now. You see that? So the country that emerged from Yugoslavia is as follow. The one of them is Bosnia and Herzegovina Republic. The population of this country is 2.2 million people. 2.2 million. And after this disintegration, this Bosnia and Herzegovina now can enjoy peace. They live in peace. They live in peace today. This country is located in Europe. Now, you have Croatia. Everybody knows Croatia. Croatia is a tourist country. It was part of Yugoslavia. It was part of Yugoslavia and Croatia break up from Yugoslavia and the population of Croatia is estimated at 4 million people. 4 million. 4 million. Instead of continue to, to, to preach one Yugoslavia in the 90s, Instead of them con to continue to preach one Yugoslavia, and after this break of of, of uh, uh, Yugoslavia, the, uh, the the uh, the the they begin to uh, uh, see they begin to agitate for different laws, including uh, different treaties, to see how they can you know fit in and begin to govern the same. A lot of them have been uh, uh, is now accepted into European Union, and now Croatia is enjoying peace. You can travel to Croatia today is a hub for tourists. And the country is now booming because they separated from Yugoslavia. Now, the third country 
is Macedonia. Macedonia was part of Yugoslavia and the population of Macedonia today is about 2 million. 2 million people. Today, after Yugoslavia, they are living in peace. They are living in peace. There is no economic crisis. There is no political crisis. There is no ethnic tension like they had during the time of when they were still in Yugoslavia. Now, the population is 2 million. And you know, no state in Nigeria, no state in Nigeria that in the capital you cannot see 2 million people. In all 36 states in Nigeria, in all the capital, you will see more than 2 million people. In the capital alone, not in the whole state. You will see more than 2 million people. And this country, Macedonia, is 2 million. The country, not state. Now, and this country, you will sell your property as a Nigerian. Sell your landed property as a Nigerian to go and live there. And there are only 2 million. Now, number four country that were part of Yugoslavia before the disintegration of Yugoslavia is a country called Montenegro. Montenegro is a, is part, was part of Yugoslavia and the population is about 6.2 million people. 6.2 million people. 6.2 million people is not up to Lagos State. It's not up to Lagos State. It's not even half Lagos State. The people you see in Lagos State, but they are country. And why I'm telling you this is that this disintegration of Nigeria is the only thing that can bring peace in entire West Africa. You see people telling you one Nigeria, one Nigeria, one Nigeria. They are only evil. Anybody that is preaching one Nigeria is evil. They should go and start reading international politics, histories, and all that. How do you resolve conflict? How do you resolve conflict? How do you resolve the conflict that we have in Nigeria now? How do you resolve that kind of... How do you solve the problem that is in Nigeria now? It has come to the point of there is no solution. That is the, that is the fact. What is happening in Nigeria now, in fact... Or in in, uh, in in a Soviet Union, it didn't happen. In this Yugoslavia, it didn't happen. But they have enough crisis that they, they at a point they decided to disintegrate, so that everybody will not die, and they disintegrated. And today, those countries are doing well. So, this six point two million in Montenegro today, Montenegro is a a very good country. Most of you are selling your properties, selling your landed properties to travel, to get a visa. You can't even get the visa to go to Montenegro. But it, there are only 6.2 million people. Now, the fifth country, the fifth country that came out of Yugoslavia is called Serbia. Serbia. Serbia is about 6.9 million people 6.9 million people in serbia serbia is also was also part of yugoslavia and they disintegrated and today they are enjoying peace there is no ethnic tension there is no uh, economic and political upheaval apart from who are in this political party and do, they are one people, they are one culture, and they, can, they are only 6.9 million people. And this 6.9 million people is not even in Lagos State, like you, a lot of you are saying there are 20 million people, 30 million people, 40 million people, in Lagos State alone. And that is why Nigeria is not working again. Nigeria can never work, apart from the overpopulation of Nigeria. It can never work. And then when you talk about, before I continue, when you talk about that the population, the Nigeria is overpopulated, that because of the population, and people will begin to make references to India. Is India a country that you are proud 
to make references to? Why is it that every time we talk about, we'll give you reasons why a very, a very good, a very good and very logical reasons why Nigeria must be disintegrated? For first of all, when we talk about Biafra, you, you will begin, you will tell us, look at South Sudan. Look at, look at uh, South, South Sudan. Uh, 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 info so worried to stop fighting for one Nigeria. Okay. Well, look at uh, uh, South Sudan. You will say, you will tell us to look at South Sudan. Look at South Sudan. Is South Sudan not better than Nigeria today? You will be telling us, look at South Sudan. South Sudan is better than Nigeria. Nigeria is ranked number three country in the world. In a number three terrorist country in the world. What is the number of Sudan? What is Sudan? What is where is Sudan is in the list? Where is Sudan is today in the list of poverty country in the world? Niger Sudan is not in poverty. Is not. Is not. Is not in the Nigeria is overtaking Sudan. So you are now making references to Sudan whenever we talk about Biafra. And then when we talk about Nigeria disintegration, you will begin to make references to India. Are you proud? Do you want to be like India? India was the, the poverty capital of the world before Nigeria overtake India. And every time we talk about population, you are saying India. India is, do you know how, do you know India was, in uh, Pakistan and all those places were part of India before. And even after the disintegration, India still have the biggest population. But I, are you saying that what you see in India today, is it life? That you see people roaming on the street and hunger everywhere, and people don't even the, the water in it. Have you not seen India in the in, in, in video? And you are saying every time you make reference to India, are you do you want to go and live in India? If you want to go and live in India because they're overpopulated, you go to India and live. Don't make reference when we are talking about disintegration that India is have population. Where do you do you collect money? Do you get job from the population? Do you get job? Does the popula overpopulated Nigeria create job for you? It doesn't create job for you. Now, have they given you good uh, health care? Have they given you school? Have they given you electricity? What, what has the overpopulation of Nigeria given to you? And whenever we are making these things to make you understand why it is important you support this integration of Nigeria for better life for your future and your, your generation unborn, you are making reference to India. As if India is a country where you should be proud of India that are dying of hunger. Don't you see Indians in Nigeria? If they are struggling everywhere. In fact, Nigeria is even better than India. So we are talking, you make reference to India. What is India that you are making reference to India? Now, the, the sixth country that came out of Yugoslavia is called Slovenia. Slovenia is only 2 million people. 2 million. And today, they are doing very well. You see? So, nobody believed that Yugoslavia will disintegrate. Just like most of you are not believing today that Nigeria will disintegrate. Nobody believed. Nobody believed that Yugoslavia will disintegrate. Nobody believed that Soviet Union will disintegrate. But today, they disintegrated and all the country that emerged from them are doing very well. They are living in peace and some of them are part of European Union today. You see that? But if they, if they continue to be in Yugoslavia, if they continue to patch, let us patch it. Let, because the, uh, be, the bigger, the better. There will be war today in Yugoslavia. There will be war. There will be killings. There could be even be ter terrorism in Yugoslavia and people will be killed, and people will be dying every day. If Yugoslavia were still to be country today, it would have been a war zone. But today, they are disintegrated, and all the countries that emerged from Yugoslavia, they are all doing very fine. That is the same thing that, is, that should happen in Nigeria, and that is what we are talking about. Because we cannot continue to be in a country where you have over 200 million people, 200 million people, and then where all the, all the politicians are corrupt, where all the uh, security agencies are criminal, where soldier is going to follow the Fulani people to kill only for just one cause, which is trying to Islamize and Fulanize Nigeria. And we cannot be part of country 
it is not the Nigeria of today is not only economic problem. It is not only an economic crisis. It is not only a, a political crisis. The crisis we have now is the crisis that happened in 19, the same crisis that happened in 18 something and 19 something during the time of Usman Danfodi. They are conquering, they are conquering the, 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 uh, the territory of people, grabbing your land, taking your property, taking your natural resources, and what have you. And we are very happy to hear that so many billions of barrels of oil has been found in North. So I think it is time for them to take that barrel as a gift and leave Nigeria and leave us. Let us have our Biafra and let every other country that want to be on their own or do the one middle belt and whatever to be on their own. Now they have oil. They have the oil in, in, uh, in they have found oil in the north. Those of you who say you cannot hear the sound, I don't know where the problem is coming from. I will be uh, trying to make the sound come up but uh, I cannot shout too much because I have been working. I have been busy all the day and this is very late as you can see. But of course, this is very important. This is what I'm doing is to inform you people. It is very important to me. It is part of the creating awareness for Biafra freedom. So if you cannot hear the voice, I don't know where the problem is coming from, but I believe people are hearing me. Those of you who cannot hear my voice, please check your phone. Check your system to see where the problem or the fault is coming from. So, so what am I saying? What I'm saying is that it is time you realize that Nigeria can never work again. Over 200 million people, it cannot work. Apart, in fact, the population, apart from the population, the issue of Nigeria is too complex. Too complex. When they tell you Nigeria is too big for you for 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 you to 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 because that is what the North are telling you these evil people who know exactly what they are doing they will tell you Nigeria is too big for for somebody to Islamize it is the same thing the same thing you are saying Nigeria is too big for somebody to Islamize is the same way in the other way around Nigeria is too big to progress you see Nigeria is too big to progress. Nigeria is too big to Islamize, and Islamization is happening. It is too big to Islamize, and every, every sector of the economy, every strategic position today that are controlled by Fulanis, and you are still saying it's too big, it's too big, but every strategic position is controlled by Fulani. So what are you talking? What is the too big there? What has this big of Nigeria, now these 200 million of Nigeria, done to protect the constitution of Nigeria? which says that every region must be represented. And this government now have not represented any region. It has not followed the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, even when the constitution is not complete. As I'm talking to you today, as I'm talking to you today, they say all regions must be represented. In Security Council meeting of Nigeria today, you don't have Igbo speaking person there. Is it according to this? That is against the constitution. All the security meeting they have been doing since 2015, there is no Igbo speaking person. And when you talk, they tell you the zone is being represented by the Calabar man, the, uh, the chief of Nava staff. His chief of Nava staff from the southeast, he is from the south south, which they I have said this thing before. They continue to divide and rule and divide and divide. And when it comes to the appointment, they are telling you it is from the zone. Is Calabar is Calabar now southeast? They are the one who divided this this zone. They say south south and south east. The thing is not in geography. I don't know where which geography they got that south south. There is nothing like that. But when they tell you, when you ask question, why is Igbo man not in the Security Council today in Nigeria? They tell you the, your zone is being represented. What is your zone that is being represented? They tell you they mention the the Kalaba or uh, the uh, the, uh, the Nav chief of Nava staff. Is the chief of Nava staff from Igbo Igbo speaking uh, state? We are talking of somebody from the five from the southeast, which they divided. But they will tell you that you have zone. You have somebody from the zone. Which zone are they talking about? Which zone are they talking about? You see, so we don't have any person, any Igbo speaking general or any security personnel to represent the Igbos 
in the Security Council meeting in Nigeria today. And that is against the Constitution of Nigeria, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, as amended. Because Igbos are not there. So, so what we are saying now is that you can look at, because I'm still coming, tomorrow probably I will come with a different, a different country, the, the one that I have disintegrated. I will be telling you this, to, I'm not coming to Africa yet. But let me tell you what the Europeans have done, what has happened. And because, you know, when these things are going on, you have to go back to history to see what has happened so that you will learn what, how to solve your own problem when you have a similar problem. What is happening in Nigeria today is worse than what happened in the Soviet Union and they disintegrated. What is happening in Nigeria today is worse than what, what has happened in Yugoslavia and they disintegrated. And today, every, all these countries that, that came out of this, all this disintegration are doing very fine. And today in Nigeria, it has come to the point that a governor, governors are accusing military personnel. A security officer of a state are accusing military men of being the criminal. And we are shouting it. The other day, it was Wiki of River State accused the GOC of 6th Division for oil bunkering. That he is now giving security information to criminals. You can imagine a governor. And today, from the same South-South, another governor is accusing the military for participating in massacre of the citizen, for participating in the attack of citizen. The Fulani attacking military followed them to attack. The governor in Nigeria is I'm making this accusation to show you the rottenness in Nigeria. Nigeria is, it can never be, it is irredeemable. And even these governors that are shouting this thing, every day they come to they will come to tell you a, a, a military man is the military. They still believe in one Nigeria. And then because they, the all the thing they know is they are calculating how much they are going to make in four years during their governorship. Nothing else. They are calculating how much they are going to make, how 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 rich they will become after they are as, as service as governor. And you don't know that the country you are serving is going down. You are jeopardizing the future of your children. You are jeopardizing the future of your generation, the community, the state, the people that have voted that voted you, the people that you are serving. You are jeopardizing their future, putting their life in the danger for continuing to believe in one Nigeria. You are putting the life of your people in danger. Because... This what is happening. Why what is happening now? That military is following his men. It will come to the point that they are not following. They will come straight to attack you without even any his men following them. That is the point. That is what we are looking for, and it is coming. It is coming to a point that military will not have his men with them. They will come and attack and kill you and kill your people because they are the Boko Haram members that have been recruited into the Nigerian military. And if there are old soldiers, if there are old people who have never who have never joined Boko Haram outside their military service, it means that they have sworn an oath of allegiance to Boko Haram while serving in Nigerian military. And they are carrying this attack. Sheldon Hesman, this is not the first time. It has been happening in Joss. It has happened in Benue. They shouted Boko Haram, they shouted this Hesman while they attack. And today, governors are are having the courage to speak and say it the way it is. It is not just enough that you are saying that military are following to attack, but the point is that you should come to reality that Nigeria is too big. The, the, not only that the population is too big, it is too complex. Not only that it is only too complex, it is too bad. It has rotten to, to the point that it, it is more than Sodom and Gomorrah. If you bring God today to, to come to Nigeria, to rule Nigeria, he will destroy Nigeria. Because if God have done it in the Bible, and one thing you people should know about this Bible is that nothing that you are going through today, nothing as a human being that you are going through in this life that is not in the Bible. There is nothing that is happening today in this world that you can't have something similar that has happened in the Bible. That Bible, you see. You see? 
There is nothing you can do or nothing that will happen to you today that you cannot see in the Bible. You see? You see this Bible? You see? You see this Bible? There is nothing you will see that happens to you today that is not in this book. This is Bible. Have you seen any Bible as big as this? Have you seen it? Have you seen it? Any Bible as big as this? Everything happening in this world is in this Bible. Why am I making, why am I saying this? It is in this Bible because, do you know what happened in Sodom, Sodom and, what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. And if you, if you invite God today to come to Nigeria, to rule Nigeria, Nigeria is rotten. You can never, it, can, you, it is irredeemable. So what will God do? Like I said yesterday, that he, he, I said you kill all these terrorists in the north. But do you know what God is going to do to Nigeria? God will first of all destroy Nigeria. He will destroy Nigeria because Nigeria is irredeemable. But now, we are not even looking at destroying Nigeria. What we are looking at now is how to make the evil people stay on their own and the semi-evil people stay on their own and those who see themselves as not evil people stay on their own. So that if you are evil and you stay on your own, you will be doing your evil and you are comfortable with your evil. Because you, you, you must be comfortable. And those, of, those who are supporting the evil that the people in the north are doing, they will be comfortable with the evil. They will stay with the evil, stay with the terrorists, stay with terrorism and be comfortable with it. Those who are not supporting terrorism but they are supporting Islamic State will also be comfortable in Islamic State. You, those, if, those in Yoruba land who are supporting Islamic State will now move their bag back to the, where they have Islamic State and be comfortable there. They will be comfortable. Nobody will disturb them. We that will believe in God, we, get, we believe in God, we believe in this Bible, we will have our own country where we will be comfortable preaching and reading this Bible. And we will have no fear that nobody will come to our church or where we are worshipping God to kill us like they are doing now. And anybody who is not comfortable, who wants to come and join us because he is a Christian, he is welcome. So long as you are Christian in your heart and pure, you will welcome to join us. But for now, it is important that we know that since God cannot come to destroy Nigeria like he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, it is very important that we separate, break up like other countries have done when they have come to the, to the end point, to the end of the tunnel. Nigeria is now at the end of the tunnel. And there is no other way other than breaking up. And that is why we are revisiting this history so that they can learn, they can begin to think towards this line. Learn from other countries who have who have undergone through the same road that Nigeria is going now, who have, who have experienced the thing that Nigeria is experiencing now, who have seen and felt what Nigerians are feeling now in the past and learned from how they solve their problem. That is what we are talking. So that everybody, so that everybody will not die. Because it will come to a point that everybody will be, the people will, like, will be killed whether you like it or not. If a military officer can come and join uh, his men without shaking and start killing people in Delta State, it is finished. And of course, it is not surprising to us. We Biafrans, Biafra agitators, we know. We know everything. In fact, what we know will shock you. We are not, we are not even telling all the things we know that is going on in Nigeria and that is going to happen in Nigeria. If we begin to review what we know, what we know so far from our intelligence gathering, it will shock you. You see all these things that this one will come and tell you, if I open my mouth and talk, Nigeria will die. We know what they, what they want to say. You see this one that Brutai will tell you, I know those personal Boko Haram. We know those things. 
In fact, we know even more than them. It is, this, is not, this is not bragging. But I'm telling you the fact that what we know will shock the military of Nigeria, the Nigerian military, what we know will shock the Nigeria police. What we know about Nigeria and what, and what is going on and what people are planning and what these people are planning. We have that intelligence. We have intelligence report more than the security people in Nigeria. No matter what they are doing. That is, this is fact. And whenever we come, now we are telling you now solutions to the problem of Nigeria. You, some of you are buying it. Some people, and we continue to preach this because this is what we did not preach in the past. And now we are preaching it. So the Soviet Union disintegrated because they, are, they, they came to the end of the tunnel. And they had no other option than to disintegrate. And they disintegrated. And today, all those countries are doing fine. The Yugoslavia came to the verge that they came to the end of the tunnel. And they had no other solution than to disintegrate. And they disintegrated. And today, all the countries that emerged from Yugoslavia are doing very fine. Now, Nigeria is at the point is at the end of the tunnel and every person must begin to think and talk disintegration you, you have you have to know this and even even as this is geopolitical zone now as they are we can the country can be like that the way it is now it can be this six geopolitical zone six country it is the, the only thing we need, the only thing we know is that we need peace. We need to be independent. We need to be separated from this nomadic Fulanis who have hold Nigeria to stand still since independent. And not by education, not by voting, but by hostility through terrorists, through terrorism, intimidation. And order. That is the only thing they have. They don't have nothing. They don't have what it takes to hold Nigeria to stand still. They hold Nigeria to stand still by intimidation. Intimidation and hostility and harassment. They use what, what we call state actors and non-state actors. What is non-state actors? What they use to continue to hold Nigeria to ransom? Non-state actors are the terrorists. Non-state actors are hessmen. Non-state actors are bandits. Non-state actors are actors are ansaro. Non-state actors are all these terrorist five terrorist group that you see. That is what they are using to intimidate and harass you and put fear in you that if you do anything, they will come and kill you. And thereby suppressing you and make you not to talk. That is why a lot of people are not talking today in Nigeria, because of the non-state actors, which what I have mentioned now. That is why a lot of people are not talking. Now, you have the state actors, which they use to suppress you and subject you to slave. The state actors are the military. The state actors are the police. The state actors are all security agencies that they are using against you. That is the state actors. So, and because of the state actors, that is why a lot of people are not talking today. EFCC is a state actor. That is why a lot of people are afraid. Those who have their hand in corruption, they are afraid to talk against this government. They are afraid to talk for Nigeria disintegration because they are afraid, afraid of the state actor that will come after them. It is either the state actor will come through the police or the state actor will come through the financial this EFCC or the state actor will come through the DSS. So these are the only way they, they hold Nigeria to stand still. And do you know why they are using the state actors against you? They are using the state actors against you because the, the state actors, these uh, security agencies are compromised. In a sane society, in a sane society, security agencies 
are independent. So it will be very difficult to have the state actors acting. They only have non-state actors. But where corruption is the order of the day, you have the active state actors, which is the military, police, and all the security agencies. And that is what they're using against you. So Nigerians, share this video. Let people begin to think that Nigeria has come to the point that the only solution, the only way to save lives of Nigerians is disintegration. Let the country disintegrate into pieces and let there be peace. Let everybody continue to struggle and govern their country the way they want. If you want Islamic State, you govern your country under Islamic law. If you are a Christian state, you govern according to Bible and according to Christian faith and however you want it. But if you continue to patch this Nigeria, it is going to consume you sooner or later. I will come again to continue to tell you how the globe is changing, how the, 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 the world is changing because of this crisis that you are having and how other country has disintegrated and break into pieces to save lives of their citizens. That is how sane people do. They want to save life. But of course, we know in Africa, some people want to die in power. Instead of relinquishing power, they rather die. And if it comes to that, it will come to those who want to die because they don't want to save life of their people. They want to answer president. They want to answer senate president. They want to be senator of Nigeria. But you can still be senator of your country if Nigeria is disintegrated. You can still be president of your country if Nigeria is disintegrated. You can still be senator. You can still be governor. You can still be whatever you are in Nigeria today. And you will have your peace. You will not be afraid of being witch hunt by uh, Fulani people. You will not be afraid of being uh, assassinated by uh, Fulani people because you spoke against them in National Assembly. You will not be afraid. You, it will be brother and sister political or politics, uh, political affair. And that is what we are looking for. So learn from other countries. Learn from what happened to other people. Don't always allow things to happen to you before you learn. You can learn from what happened to other people because sometimes if you allow things to happen to you, you may never recover to learn your lesson. Thank you for watching and good night. Happy weekend.